and welcome to another episode of Aloha Authentic with Kamaka Pili, Hawaii's only TV show where we feature our own local artisans and cultural practitioners and give them the opportunity to share their stories, their mana'o, their kauna, the meanings of their art and their work with you in the comfort of your home. All about sharing mo'olelo, about where we come from and where we live, Hawaii Ine, here in the islands. So we have very special guests today. We're in our third season. We've been talking across the state with multiple artists and multiple talented people who have mana'o to share. And today is no different. And I'm very super, super excited because I loved her work ever since before I even knew her and, and got to build a relationship with her. But Leo Hone, Hawaii's own Leo Hone. And you'll get to see some of her pieces coming up. But sit back, relax, grab your bowl of poi because we definitely have our bowl of poi. And real fast, if this is a first time for you, welcome to Aloha Authentic. But we eat poi on the show. And the reason why we have our open bowl of poi is because Tutu always said growing up, when the bowl of poi is open on the dinner table, there's no negativity spoken. Everything is about positivity, about perpetuation, about creation. So this show and the stories that we share is nothing different. So we have the bowl of poi to represent that. Plus, who doesn't want to eat poi? Poi is so ono. And of course, when we went Hawaiians, you got to have food. So we get our food. That being said, grab your bolo poi and come join along with us. But before we get into our conversation, we've started our Did You Know series, and up to this point, we've been sharing a lot of our different la'au, or our plants around our islands, and the different purposes that they serve, uh, medicinally especially. Today, we're gonna step away from the la'au and the plants, and we're gonna go more into something that we kinda see every day, more in our um, busy lifestyle, which is our streets. Our streets have so much name, and they carry so much names from Hawaii's history. And one that we all probably say all the time, especially for those who are in Waikiki, is Kalakaua Avenue. Now, Kalakaua Avenue, some people say it so fast because they don't even know, you know, Kalakaua, Kalakaua, well, all of these different variations, but they don't realize who they're actually mentioning. King David Kalakaua was Hawaii's last male reigning monarch before their last monarch, who is his sister, Queen Liliuokalani, had taken reign of our islands. And King Kalakaua, one is very prominent within Waikiki. Waikiki holds so much history of our ali'i, and King Kalakaua had his one of his residences in there as well. So, all of the whole point of the Did You Know series was to reach out to you and to spark interest to you to know what's out there. So, if you want to learn more about who King David Kalakaua was, we invite you to go check it out. It's so easy to Google nowadays or have different books in the library. So, go pick yourself up some book and learn some more about Hawaii's history. So now we have that out of the way, I get my spoon and I get my cup of water because now it's time for me to just sit back and listen to the different mana'o that Leo Hone has to share. So today we have a very, very special guest, Hawaii's artist, Leo Hone, and her husband, Uncle Kamuela from Kamuela Fine Art. So please, mahalo nui you guys for joining us. I really, really appreciate you taking the time. See, there they are, there they are. <laughs> so we have so much to talk about because Leo Hone had actually just launched or unveiled her latest painting of her series that she has been working on um, for many of years now. So we want to be able to share the mo'olelo because the meaning and the, the message that it shares is so powerful, especially nowadays with the return of Hokulea coming around um, next month actually, spending their three years out at sea. There's so much mana'o to be shared and so much um, kuleana that I, I think yes. everybody needs to be aware of that, that we hold and that we entail. So before we get into the whole series, can you just share a little bit about your, your newest painting with us? My newest painting is Ke Kahi Va'a Kalua, the other voyaging canoe. And I think it's so important that you don't lose sight of the one that you can't see, the one that is in another dimension. It's our history. And I have my own history. I'm not Hawaiian. But I have my own history, and that one has personal meaning for me, too. And so. I look across to the spirit canoe, and to me, it is my ancestors, my parents, my mentors, and the ones that went before me. And I think of my, my lifetime as, as my holokai, my voyage. This one I could not not do. It is so paramount to the history of Hawaii. So some 1,500 years ago, uh, voyager and fisherman, Hawaii Loa, started out in a voyaging canoe, guided by stars, ocean currents, sometimes flights of birds, 
and set out on the on the double hull because you could carry more, you could carry people, and the voyages, as they got better at what they were doing, got longer and farther until he made it to Hawaii. So this is terribly important to the history of Hawaii. So we see, I mean, with all the other paintings, if we can kind of catch a glimpse of, of this big, beautiful masterpiece on the side, there is a lot of action going, but you mentioned Hawaii law. And with everybody talking, especially about Hokulea, you chose to do Hawaii law. I don't know you shared a little bit about, about that just now, but why not focus on Hokulea? Why Hawaii law? Because Hawaii law was built in the traditional way as much as possible. There were some substitutions that had to be made. But the original voyaging canoes were hollowed out koa logs. There were lahala sails and ohia on the connecting the, the hulls mm -hmm. and the paddles and stanchions were how. And as much as possible, this canoe was made by master canoe builder Rido Bowman in the ancient way. Mm -hmm. And I, that really spoke to my heart. And knowing that I wanted to do a voyaging canoe, I felt it should be that one. Mm -hmm. So for those who, I'm who've never seen your work, who's looking, and they see two va'as in there. And we'll touch upon more about that la um, later. But within all your work, you always have a balance between now and past. This one, not any different. What is the main, what is your point of your work? I tell people I'm painting an influence. You know, I, I get this all the time. Oh, you're the one that paints the ghosts. Well, to me, ghosts are the vestige, shadowy vestige of something that's gone. And the spirit of something is alive and vibrant and can, you can be filled with the spirit of something, not so much with the ghost. And so I tell people I'm painting an influence, that's all. And when the, I've been doing the ones of the Ali'i and they have passed on, I am trying to do the legacy. With you know, since, since we're with the ocean, and since Hokulea, that, that whole message of Malama Honua, and, and really taking the time to broaden the oceans and broaden the globe for three years, you know, and for what, when I first seen this and you unveil it, that kind of, and chicken skin now, just thinking of all that message captured into one piece, how do you express these types of messages that are so spiritual, it's like that, that, that's something that you can literally sketch out yourself. It's obvious that it kind of flashes to you, that it comes to you. How, do, how does that happen? Well, I, I give it lots of time to come. I paint very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> As a Christian, I pray about my work. Some of my, um, some of my whole concepts have come in dreams, and sometimes the correction has come in the dream. So I, I feel very connected to what I'm doing. That's not quite an answer, but. Well, I know, I mean, this, it's, when you talk about stuff so spiritual like this, it's hard to give one answer. And I, and I know there's not one right answer, um, but there's just so much aspects to one of your pieces. Uncle, on, in your perspective, like what is, what was your goal? Did, did you have a, your own particular goal or uh, hope with no, this piece? No, really this piece is a very powerful piece. Mm. I feel it's very powerful. Um, not only in Hawaiian culture, for all cultures in this world. Because mm -hmm. if you go back in history, there was pirates, sailors, who found the U.S. United States of America, where they came from. Not from the U.S. United States, they came from England, they came from um, other countries. And there were sailors, voyagers like the Hawaiian people, voyagers. We are voyagers in life also, to find who you are as Hawaiians, who you are as that's Kanaka Oli, the way you want to go. Um, Leone's um, artwork is very powerful in, in, in perceiving that for us uh, as Hawaiians. Um, like she says, she gets um, spiritual things that come to her, and it's true. Um, in her working on this piece, I'm, I'm there, yeah. <laughs> we live in, at home, and she's working hard. And I'm at work for the Navy, and then she's uh, working at home, back home, and she's all drained from painting all day long. But um, 
Um, this piece took her a while to get it done. I'm not sure what the timing was, but the whole thing was, at the time she started the painting, did not know what canoe, today's canoe was supposed to use, the ukulele or whatever. But you know what came into play? Uh, that's really the time, we call it time, there was time. Every painting she does is, there's a time to launch it, yeah. Like a canoe, there's time to go. In Hawaiian still, if you feel it's time to go, you go. If the spirit or the mind don't tell you, don't go, you don't go, yeah. So Leonie was working on this painting, they put it on a cycle. That she had the spirit canoe already, came in the vid, her. The, today's canoe wasn't there. But what came out? Out of the dry dock. <laughs> the Hawaii Loa came out of dry dock. Are you two years ago? A year ago? Two thousand fifteen. Two thousand fifteen it came out of dry dock. And um who knows? It just there it is. The timing so was right. You were working with the friends of, of Hokula and Hikianalia with this. Yes. So you had a lot of outside. Mm -hmm. That's why I was just talking to a friend earlier today too. Is being around like-minded people or the people with the right energy feeds you. You know, it's yes. like a sponge. Yes. You just suck in, which is why I always I get opportunities to next to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but th that's that's so awesome. And and just you know, a lot of people see these pieces. Well, not this one, but all your past pieces. And it's always interesting. It's always just eager for. Especially me, you know, what what is the meaning? You know, what what do you even think, or how do you think to come up with something like this? But well, anyway, this is the nineteenth, I believe you said, yes. piece of your collection. So this series, Kalamai, what is the name of, of the whole series? Ike Ho'omaupopo, which means consciousness. Awesome. So calling on Hawaiians to know their identity. Mm -hmm. So we have the three pieces in the front. Now, if we can pan down a little or tilt down, right in the center is the first piece, and I believe that's the one with um, Queen Lily Wool Kalani. Yes. And um, with that, what was that initial spark to start this series for you? <laughs> I'm an organist. I was playing for weddings at Koi Hao Church, and I was wandering around between weddings looking at the portrait of the Ali'i all around the balcony. And I, I was trying to connect, to bring something to me out of it. And as I, as I was studying these different monarchs, it came really heavy on me that I needed to make them speak, to come alive, to show the legacy that they left for their people. So Queen Liluokalani, I notice that I think everybody else notices too. There's always a rose yes. in each painting. Does that come from Queen Liliuokalani? It does, because she called her people her pua. And I know crown flower was her favorite flower, but I wasn't sure how to paint that so anybody would know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I understand roses were delivered to her every day so she could read the newspaper. Mm -hmm. And so I chose roses to be the Hawaiian people. And so each one has hidden roses. The roses in the new one are hidden in the water, and it's just this gentle reminder, this is for you. Mm -hmm. So you have the rose, but you also, I always see there's an owl there. Yes. What, what does the, the pu'el represent? Well, the pu'el was important to a very dear friend of mine who was a teacher of Hawaiian history at Waianae. And I, I l was looking after him in his last days, and he had taught me so much over the years that when I started the series, I decided to just gently mark it in honor of my friend. And I got about three or four into the series when I would have been willing to leave it out. Mm -hmm. But the kids want to know, <laughs> where's the pu'el? <laughs> <laughs> so when you see everybody up to like that, it's like, yeah. you gotta stand back and see the whole painting. <laughs> no, I'm trying to find that all. <laughs> and you imagine what, to see other things in a <laughs> painting. That's a one, of, one of the people came by. Did she put a, um, a crab in there? <laughs> you know I mean? There's no crab in there. No Aoma in there. No, there's no Aoma in there. <laughs> well, on that note, since you say that, I know other pieces that's part of this series. There is what a fisherman one, um, a canoe, a va'a one, that's like a paddling canoe, um, surfing. You know, all of these things, for me, there's a part in my life that I can connect with each one. And as a Hawaiian, 
always trying to find what is the meaning, you know. For you, and I know you mentioned to, to share the, the legacies, but for the whole, and especially calling it consciousness, there has to, there, there, there's, has to be a deep level of under or of passion for you or connection to each of these pieces. Um, what I'm trying to get at is being a non a non Hawaiian, be, coming out with these, I'm not saying creating these stories, but being able to express these legacies and these stories. What are, you, what is the main goal with being conscious for Hawaiians, using your pieces as tools? What is the goal that you expect or you hope for the, for the native people? I think I'm just trying to draw attention to make people look at their roots. Mm -hmm. Don't look at today and think you just landed there. You are a product of the ones that came before you and your culture is a product of the teachers and the ones that passed it on. If you think in terms of not knowing who you are, just for example, you're, you're standing in a train station. You're in line to the ticket window. And you're about five people back, and you're just standing there. And this horrible thought comes across your, your mind. I, d I don't know who I am. And y you check your ID, but it, it does, it's just a name. It doesn't tell you anything. And you turn to the guy behind you and you say, do you know me? No. Oh, sorry. Do, do you know who I am? No. And you said, you go ahead. Oh, you sure? Yeah. I, I don't know who I am. And if I don't know who I am, I don't know where I'm supposed to go. And so, and then it comes to you. And it's, it's this beautiful feeling. You know who you are. You know exactly who you are. You have all these memories, good, bad, sad, happy, just comes flooding over you. And you're like, oh, it's OK, it's OK. I know who I am. I know where I'm supposed to go. So it's, it's a case of know who you are. That's, that's so, awesome. so awesome, huh? powerful, yeah. It, it came to me. Um, that was a true story. It actually happened to me in um, our relationship. Um, together. Um, I, I was uh, spent a lot of time away in the Navy and military, came back home, and um, still didn't know who I was, who I was or who I am as a Hawaiian. You know, back in those days, uh, back in those days, you'd be quiet, you'd be humble, you'd, you don't say who you are. I mean, they don't know who you are. You're Polynesian, you're out there in the U.S., all over the world. They don't know who you are. I mean, they look at you, they think you're a Mexican or you're something else, right? You see a Hawaiian, what is that? Right? Back in those days. But today, growing up and being in a relationship with Lehoni and being part of this, what you call it, is a mission, promoting Hawaiian culture through artwork to people to see, actually find out who they are and where they want to go in life um, as Hawaiians, as, as the people themselves. Um, I also found myself where I wanted to be, who I am. They used to call me Samuel, Sam. But my mom always used to call me Kawala, but that time I didn't, you know. But today, I like to be known as Kamuala because I know who I am as a Hawaiian now. I found where my boots are, where I wanted to go, is here and promote the culture and bring up our kekis in the right way, the knowledge of Olelo. Um, when you do events and, and you have the opportunity to be up front and talk face to face with people, what are the reactions that you get from your work? A lot of tears. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of tears. Some, some will bang, they'll see it, they'll, they'll find themselves in there on the bar. Mm -hmm. I'm there. I mean, if you look at their paintings, and their paintings are really big, um, I see a lot of people come and they say, I'm uncle. I feel I'm there. I'm part of that. And that's key to what Lehoni wants to put out. So even if one person gets that message, that's you're successful. That's oh, yes. I see it. yes. That's so awesome. Because many a times I do, you know, and with the different things, like I said, you have, I mean, the different pieces you have is kind of on different spectrums of a room, different 
corners of the room. You know, you have the surfing, you have the fishing, you have, I believe this is Kuhio and, and working Bahi Ai in the, in the, um, the Kalo patch, Kalo. and then you even have the Royal Order of Kamehameha on that side. And even the figures that you have are, are the legacies that you paint in there. I believe the Kuhi, uh, the Royal Order, you have three different ali'i in there. Mm -hmm. And even with that, like, how do you get that feeling to who you're supposed to share? What legacy that you share? Because I know one of the more modern ones, that later ones I've I seen was um, Uncle Ciro and Uncle aye, Gabby. Aye. Where, where did that come from? You know, how do you get to understand who comes next. Cyril asked me, he said, well, honey, when are you going to paint me? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I put him off for a few years. And he, he said to me, he says, you go, you're going to paint me while I'm still alive? I said, Cyril, you're my age. <laughs> so uh, that was one that I was a little slow to come out with. And uh, it, it was where I turned when uh, Hawaii Loa was in dry dock. And I went and finished that piece. Do you expect any more to come out after this piece? Oh, yeah. But maybe not much. I seem to be losing my eyesight. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's just one gift, more of a stronger gift that you, you, you receive from Akua. Just to be able, I mean, that tells itself with someone challenged with their vision, but still be able to express something to vision, you know, to see that. Chick is getting just thinking about <laughs> that. Hanabaya, I'm more into looking this way than I am for you guys. I'll come visit you guys next month. We'll be right back. Um, but actually, that being said, you know, we've talked a lot and we're coming down at the end, but I always ask people, and I always end this show. I mean, the show's name is Aloha Authentic, and the whole point is to share with our audience the different understandings of when we say Aloha, what, we're, what are we talking about? You know, what does it mean to our kupuna? For you w and the work that you do, what does aloha mean to you and how are you able to express that? I guess I have to bring it into my background as a Christian and think of the, just the fruits of the Spirit in love and kindness. And I try to live my aloha in my work too. Mm -hmm. What about you, Oko? Oh, well, you know, first of all, as Hawaiians. You need some poi first to answer yeah, the question. Yeah, we would poi <laughs> answer the question because the poi stands for a lot of things. Huh? The poi locks in and, and connects and stuck to your, your mouth and, and everything else. Mm -hmm. And back in the old days, the, the, my mom they used to have poi as this paste, yeah? Aloha. Make you stuck. Mm -hmm. Aloha brings people together. Aloha means love. Means respect, honor, and so dignity to, to all cultures of the world, all colors. We Hawaiians, um, we have a lot of aloha in this world. I've been all over, and there's a special spirit in us. God has blessed us. Okay, who has blessed us with this paradise? <laughs> we live in paradise. And paradise means aloha also. People come here. Yes, sometimes they don't understand. They don't want to understand. That's okay. We respect the culture. That's okay. We know we're in paradise. You know, okay, cool. He's blessing us. The boy, they keep us together. <laughs> Yes. Aloha to me. My gosh, that is so <laughs> cool. No one has ever said it, and I would never expect that answer, but awesome. Me Mahalo neither. Nui. Where can people, you know, we, we spark the interest in people. Where can people find your work? We have a website, kamoelafinearts.com. Awesome. And are you in any galleries? I'm in Wise Gallery in Haleiwa. I'm in Lahaina Galleries on Maui. Awesome. Well, there you go. Check her out. We have so much. Start off with Kamuela Fine Arts. And also, also put out a uh, little thing too. We're also in uh, Aloha, Aloha Moana Center at the um, Satellite, Satellite City, City Hall. Hall. <laughs> <laughs> really? They asked us to put some paintings in there. Well, you know, that's a really <laughs> high stress level place, so you need something oh, to calm down. I know, calm you down. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Just go in there, stand in the corner for a little bit and stare at the painting. You'll get it easy. That was, that was 
that was a connection from one of our um, culture um, people that we un we we love very much. So, what was her name? <laughs> <laughs> Tiny, no. Tony. Tony. Tony Lee. Tony Lee. Mm, Auntie Tony. Awesome. Connected us to Bill. Yes. Yeah. And we saw it at Marijuana after all these past Marijuana. Yeah. I, I, I passed by. They didn't want to interrupt because you guys were super <laughs> packed and super busy. So it seemed like you, everybody was just listening to <laughs> them all. Yeah, all little is a uh, big island hero. Awesome. <laughs> That's the place to go, guys. Hawaiians. Oh, man. The first time we went there, Leoni was there to execution and work. We had tutus coming down from the mountains. Yeah. Um, speaking all little Hawaiian, no English, and tears coming out there. Oh. Seen her work, but you know what the funny thing is? They thought that was my work, <laughs> <laughs> but they found out that was Leonie's work. As more tears came yeah. down, <laughs> but we, we don't always tell. <laughs> <laughs> that's the na'ao. That's the na'ao. That's the na'ao. Hawaiian word of the day is na'ao. Na'ao means your gut. Your gut is what you follow by. You know, in Hawaiian mentality, what I've learned, there's three sources of thought or or emotion or sources that connect you to a kuo. You have your po'o, which connects you to your kupuna. You have your piko, your umbilical, that connects you to your, your parents, where you're connected to your mother, your, your father. And then you have your ma'i, your private areas. That's your, um, actually, I totally went on another tangent. That's the three pikos. Your, your ma'i is your third piko that connects you to your future. The three sources that um, you connect to a kuo is your lolo, your brain, which to me always was like the, um, you know, all the experiences that you learn, you build. You have your pu'uva, your heart, which comes all your emotion. And you have your na'au, which is your straight connection to akua, to your God and all your kupuna. And when I look at your work, I see na'au. So mahalo <laughs> nui for that. Um, time is running low, so I just want to let everybody know. Check out our um, website, alohaauthentic.org, for all our past episodes. We're in our thir third season, so we have almost 20 episodes, I think. We've been racking it up. All of different kupuna, all of different artists, and all of different knowledge that is free for us to learn so we can continue our culture here in Hawaii. Like our Facebook page at Aloha Authentic, also our Instagram at Aloha Authentic, and we will see you next month. And next month, don't worry, I'll be bringing the poi. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs>